Hello everyone, it's Benny, and welcome to the September 2018 update video. Today, I have three things I want to talk about. I want to give a brief post-mortem for the Ludum Dare game I made last month. I want to talk about the future of the channel this month, because a few exciting things will be happening in the current series, and a new series is going to start taking shape. I don't know if it'll actually be released this month or next month, but it's starting to take shape. I'm excited to talk about it. And I also want to talk about a few things you all have brought up. So let's go ahead. Let's get started. Though I should mention, I will be leaving time tags in the video description so you can easily skip to whatever part of the update you are interested in. But first of all is the Ludum Dare postmortem. Here, I want to share the game I made for those of you who didn't watch the live streams. I want to share my general thoughts on how it turned out, and I want to share what I have learned from it so that you all can benefit from the experience as well. So for those of you who didn't see it, this is it. What you're seeing right now is footage of the game I made for Let Him Dare. It's a bullet hell style shmup, as you can see. And honestly, the game itself is pretty self-explanatory. You want to fly around and shoot the enemies and not get hit by the ever-increasing density of bullets on screen. That's how it implements the theme, running out of space. It also implements it in the story because you're actually literally running to the edge of outer space. So, And it's also to defeat a monster that is eating space. So the threat to the universe is you're running out of space. There's a sort of threefold implementation of the theme there. But yeah, the game's pretty self-explanatory. Now, if you did watch the live streams, you might have noticed that the game is very, very slightly different from what I submitted for Ludum Dare. That's because I had this interesting idea. What if I did submit this to the jam instead of the compo? What if I had that extra 24 hours? What would the game have ended up like? And yeah, I just experimented with that. There's no seriously notable difference. It was mostly minor balancing. There's also a good and a bad ending now, depending on whether you can clear the game without using any continues. <laughs> I also created a simple soundtrack. It's pretty simple. It's 100% general MIDI, just rendered with, I believe I used the Titanic sound font to render it. And yeah, that's all I did. So very simple stuff. Turns out, wouldn't have changed too much, but there you go. It was a worthy experience. I learned from that as well. Overall, though, my general opinion of the project is I'm pretty happy with it. I had a lot of fun making the game, and I've had a lot of fun playing it, too. I've actually found myself on multiple occasions where I just happen to have like five, ten minute break in what I do. I'll say, hey, yeah, let's go through my Ludum Dare game again. Let's try this different tactic. Let's just see what happens. And yeah, I've had lots of fun just playing around with different things, seeing the different ways to finish the game. I've had a lot of fun with it. Now, not everyone agrees with me, the reviews aren't necessarily wowed by it, but you know what? That's okay. One of my game dev mantras is, it's okay if nobody loves your game the way you do. And I say that because, let's say I have a brilliant idea for a game. It is just the coolest thing ever, and nobody's done it before. Something, It's just something awesome. It is smothered in awesomeness. And I go in, put in all the effort and details, just just take it really to the top, an amazing product. Even if you do that, doesn't mean anything. It's totally possible you put that out there, and people just don't get it. They don't feel the same way about it as you do. It's just, just one of the truths of game development. You never really know how people are going to feel about your game until they've already played it. Not that this was something amazing like that, but you know, you get the idea. So that's why I say that. I don't really worry about making every single game I do a smashing success with everyone. I just focus on making something that I feel is worth playing. And if I, I feel like if I do that enough times, then eventually something is going to stick with people. People, something will be an idea that both me and the people can agree, yeah, this is all right. So I don't worry about it. And that's how I stick to game dev without being crushed by the pressure. But uh, I digress. So the official ratings will be out tomorrow, and I have a link to both the Let em Dare page and the game itself in the video description, including both the competition version and the bonus version where I did some balancing and added a soundtrack. So feel free to check it out. I challenge you to complete the game without using any continues and get the good ending because it's totally doable. As you're seeing in these clips, I'm doing it multiple times. It's 
it's definitely doable once you learn how the game works and the trick to all the attacks. But <laughs> anyways. So to wrap up all the Ludum Dare stuff, I'm going to share the biggest thing I've learned from doing this. And then we're going to move on to the real meat of this update video. So the biggest thing I noticed in making this is my approach to this was basically do all the different roles of a typical game team and do them by myself for a game in under 48 hours. And that's not a really good way to approach this. Because, sure, I've done all the different roles, but I don't think any of them were done especially well because I had to really squeeze down how much time I could focus on any one role to fit in all the other roles. Like, say, the graphics. I actually am reasonably happy with the way the graphics turned out, surprisingly enough. But, I mean, if I'd spent more time on it, they could totally be better. It's definitely not an amazing, mind-blowing job. And, yeah, I feel like that could have been done better if I had more time to focus on it, but I couldn't even make a proper final boss sprite or different sprites for the enemies because I had to fit in time for everything else. And same thing, especially with game balance. I feel it's balanced enough to be playable and still fun, but it's not really a well-balanced game. It could definitely be done a lot better, and I didn't really have the time to do that because I could only spend so much time in the balancer role. So, if I was to participate in another Ludum Dare event, what I would do differently, the biggest thing I'd do differently, is I would pick a style of game which really only depends on one or two of the typical game dev rules. And those two roles really define the success or failure of that particular type of game. That way, I can focus my effort just on those things, just on what's essential for the game to succeed, rather than spreading myself ridiculously thin on all these different tasks throughout the process. That is the biggest thing I would do differently, and that's my takeaway. So that concludes Ludum Dare. Now I'd like to talk about the meat of the update, starting with upload schedule. Something some of you may or may not know is I have been posting an exact date-by-date -date upload schedule for my channel. It's under the About section of my main channel page. You can go there, and you'll see a list. There's a date, and then next to the date is what video will be released on that date. What I'd like to talk about is why that list seems so sparse. Because right now, it only has four videos listed in there for the entire month of September which might seem a bit odd compared to, say, August, which had 10 videos in there for the month. The reason is I'm posting that upload schedule in the case of worst case scenario. So even if it's a worst case scenario, and for some reason I could do absolutely nothing for the channel in the next month, those four videos are still going to come out. What I expect to happen is at some point in the next week or two, a whole bunch more videos will be ready, and then the upload schedule will be updated, and September will be a significantly busier month than it is claimed to be right now. So I want to specify that. And I also want to talk about why this has happened, because there's a very interesting reason for that. The reason there's been a bit of a delay in my usual swath of videos getting ready is because I've spent that time preparing a brand new series and I am finally ready to announce it. Coming up, around the same time the game programming series will begin the game portion, is an all-new series on Vulcan. That's right, I am doing a Vulcan tutorial series, and I am really excited about this because Vulcan is awesome. <laughs> and, yeah, for those of you who don't know, Vulcan is a brand new 3D graphics API like OpenGL, but it gives you significantly lower level access than OpenGL does. It lets you bypass a lot of the weirdness in OpenGL. And, oh, there's so much cool stuff about Vulkan. It runs on, in theory, it's going to run on just about everything. 
it's it's like the successor to OpenGL. It's like think OpenGL plus. It is awesome. I cannot wait to do a series on it. So the format of the series, for those of you who are curious, I right now I expect it to be somewhat of a mix between the format of the Intro to Modern OpenGL series and the format of the software rendering series. I'm going to be showing you how to make something with the API from the ground up, but additionally, I'm also going to focus on how to integrate that into existing programs. So ideally, you wouldn't have too, too much effort if you want to, say, have a Vulkan renderer for your current OpenGL program or your current Direct3D program or whatever else you might have. And yeah, I'm really excited for it. That's all I plan to share right now. I've also done a good amount of work preparing some other future series, but alas, they are not far along enough that I feel comfortable announcing them. But there are some new and exciting things in the work, and I am greatly looking forward to sharing it with you guys. So beyond that, I want to talk about the future direction of the game programming series, because coming up in the relatively near future is something kind of exciting. And that is, we will be starting on the game portion itself. We will begin actually making a game. And I'm excited for that. I hope you're all excited for that. But here's what I want from you right now, viewers. Right now, I have a plan for the game I want to make for that. It's a pretty general plan, but it's not beyond modification. I want to point that out because from the people I've talked to, I've talked to some people in Discord and in comments and whatnot. A number of people have a general idea of what they want in a series like this, in a series on making a game. They want to see, how do I do this particular thing? Because that would really help me with the game I'm working on or the technology I'm doing. So I want to take just a general poll of that. If you're one of those people, if you have some specific thing you would like to see in creating a game or in technology, or in whatever, please let me know, preferably sooner rather than later. And I'm going to try to incorporate as many of those as possible into the design of this game I'm doing in the game portion, so that hopefully it can be as valuable as possible to as many of you as possible when we ultimately do it. So that is all the big announcements I wanted to make. So, to conclude the update video, I'd like to talk about some of the things you all have brought up to me. Kind of like an FAQ of sorts. Hopefully, this will be useful to people, and it'll be a way we can improve interaction a little bit. I'd like to interact with my viewers a little bit more. So, a few things people have brought up a lot that I feel are worthy of addressing is one. Hey Benny, what about the bonus video on the math behind motion integration? That was something that came up in video 16 of the game programming series, and a lot of people seemed really interested in, well, how that math works. What is the math behind why these particular types of integrators are superior to others for the purpose of games? So thank you all very much for your feedback, and I will be making a bonus video on that because lots of people seem very interested in that. Look forward to that in the coming months. Another thing people talked about is the 3D math series. This is something I mentioned a few months ago, the possibility of doing a series dedicated to how 3D math works for games. What sort of 3D math is useful, how that math works. And I still think this is a decent idea. I currently think what I'm working on right now will probably give more value to more people than that. But Thank you all for talking about this. I do think it's a cool idea, and maybe later on, when I have less things on my plate, I'll give it a shot, because I think that would be useful to people. Finally, a surprisingly common question is, Hey Benny, what is your opinion on NVIDIA's new real-time ray tracing technology? First of all, I think it's awesome that we're finally getting this sort of thing in hardware that'll be a lot of fun to play around with. But I think the biggest thing is I want to caution people about getting too hyped over this. And really, there's two reasons for this. 
The first is a lot of the effects that people think of when they think about ray tracing, like those fancy multi-layered reflections that have that nice, crisp, appropriate blurring and photorealistic tapering all to them, or global illumination effects with all the indirect lighting and color bleeding. From what I've seen so far, on a consumer level graphics card, it seems very unlikely that the new technology will be able to cast enough rays per pixel to do that sort of thing, and still leave enough free overhead for the rest of the game to work. Maybe on some extremely high-end, over-expensive <laughs> setup you could do something like that, but on your typical gaming rig, it seems unlikely. Who knows, maybe the technology will end up being better than expected, but from what I've seen, that seems not likely. So I'd be careful about that. The other thing I'd be a little cautious of is spatial data structures. Classically, one of the, if not the biggest obstacle for real-time ray tracers is getting a spatial data structure that works efficiently enough on the GPU to still be practical. And the big obstacle in that is memory access speeds. You have to essentially do some indirect data access to some far off locations in memory at like a per pixel level and there's really hard to find a way around that. And when you're thrashing the cache on a per pixel level in a performance critical function, that does not do you any favors for your ray tracing performance. Now I understand supposedly this new technology, there's some way to at least greatly reduce, if not solve, this problem. But the thing is, they're not the first people to make that sort of claim. There's been a number of people who claim so-and-so will allow practical data access for real-time ray tracers, and frankly, none of them have ended up being practical for one reason or another so far. So, uh, I'm a skeptic. Maybe this is the final point where they do have a practical way around that, but, uh, I'll believe it when I see it. <laughs> so there you go. That's what I think of this new real-time ray tracing technology. In the long run, I think it's a great step in the right direction, and I look forward to where it evolves. But for the current generation, I don't expect it to ultimately make any major changes to the gaming landscape, other than just beyond the novelty of, hey, look, this is a game that does everything with ray tracing. How cool is that? <laughs> you know? So that's what I think. And that's just about all I wanted to cover in this update video. Thank you very much for joining me, and I hope to see you all in the coming videos. Don't forget there is a Benny Discord if you want to talk more with me and other people of the channel, and there is a Patreon page if you'd like early access to videos, or if you want special thanks from me in the video descriptions. Thank you very much. I will see you all in the next video.